Okay, you like that I use a TV camera. Do you like the lighting? Do you like it when I go trippy? Do you know what a video synthesizer is? I first started working with analog video tools in high school because I was obsessed with public access and I wanted to produce public access programs. So I would take the bus to LACC after school and got to work in a, in a control room. And digital wasn't around, this is like the late 90s. I just got to use mixers, I got to use, you know, tube cameras and focus knobs and I just loved that whole TV studio feel and, and the art of it and the immediacy of it. Then I went to college and I studied photography and film and I got a very traditional education. So I learned ins and outs of darkroom printing and lighting and true cinematography, shooting on film. I got just like a very technical education. I don't just rely on, on plugins or post effects because I really like to collaborate with hardware. I like to plug in, like plug in my brain to mixers and video synthesizers because I want to see what they give me. Like a lot of times something will happen that's way beyond my level of thinking and I want to just give up a certain amount of control and see what, what comes back to me. I like the immediacy of tactile tools. I really want to like have an idea come to my head and not have room to edit or overthink to sort of almost have this like cybernetic relationship with the tools. So I want to like work it and just get rid of any kind of intellectual thought that might kill an idea. So that's like really the most, that's what I really am dedicated to and why I can stick to analog is because I, I need that and I have too much of a, I just don't want those demons. <laughs> yeah. I grew up watching early cable television and was indoctrinated by liquid television and Z channel and just experimental film and video. I just kind of, I think I was born at the right time to like implant these, this aesthetic and these ideas in me. I kind of joke that I'm like a mutant of like cathode ray tube technology. <laughs> you know, I grew up watching all this stuff. And then when it came time for me to make things, I did try digital. And it just was like, that's just not what my mind wants to see. And also just due to uh, affordability. I mean, I, I was paying off hefty student loans. High-end digital and film was just completely out of reach. So I, I picked up uh, a tube camera on like some eBay auction for $25. I mean, I grew up in, in Los, I grew up and I live in Los Angeles. So like production companies were going digital. So I started inheriting tape decks and like just analog tools flew, flew into me. Like I was able to establish a full on TV studio on, on very little money and then when I started producing works, I would look at it and, and, and it was shot on a tube camera and shot on beta tape. It just looked like what I had, like the ideas I had in my head. So it just kind of synced up with whatever, my mutant <laughs> sensibility. <laughs> I feel like television has never gotten the respect that it deserves. Like the technology of the television itself is this extremely beautiful thing. I also like the collaborative aspects of uh, like live television, especially like a lot of like, like my favorite stuff is like Italian TV shows where they'd have like some artists come on and there was like freaks like me in the control room, you know, and that whole like collaborative live immediate thing that's going on. Yeah. Mostly for music videos, I use them as an opportunity to create some new visual language that no one's ever seen before, but that I know I can produce in a lab. 
in between videos, I'm experimenting, I'm doing things, I'm getting to know all the tools. And then when I get a, an assignment or a commission, I decide that's the time to just focus it in. And I, I'm very selective about what I'm gonna, what tools I'm gonna use. Like I'll kind of listen to the music, figure out a pattern, and then just kind of place ideas where they belong. I tend to work with people, musicians that see my work and say, I really like what you do, like can you give me some of that? I can tell that they've looked at my work and they know what, I, what I'm capable of and they trust me. And I try to um, find people that, that trust me <laughs> and let me do my thing. Before I even start production on a video, I will storyboard it and kind of write a script that will include the scenarios the, and the what things are going to happen. Because often my structure is like the is like the nuts and bolts of it. I kind of want to take the viewer on a voyage. Like I actually feel lucky that I can get someone's attention for even three and a half minutes. So I want it to be worth it. So I'll build like a pretty solid structure and know when I'm going to like go from like uh, what I kind of claim term is like clean video. So unaffected video and then maybe there'll be like a dream sequence, right? And then we'll kind of lift off into like a more like psychedelic or, you know, synthy world, but then like it'll weave back and forth. So you can kind of see the like all elements of television technology, right? So I'll have like something very classic television in the production design and the lighting, like kind of show off that stuff, feature it, and then it'll dip into like the tools that you'd see in the control room. I kind of think of the effects as like levels of consciousness or like dimensions. So like one time, you know, maybe if it's like clean video, it's like, you know, the material plane, and then I'm gonna lift you off into the like ethereal plane and just like kind of like, I don't know, I just kind of like to create a world that isn't just like one reality or one level of consciousness. When I first started out and started producing music videos on a really small scale, like tiny budgets, doing videos, stuff for friends, I had, gotten the attention of like a mega rock star, Gerard Way, who was like of My Chemical Romance, and his record company, Warner Brothers, like emailed me a few times. And I was kind of over it, and I had been writing treatments for years and not getting music videos, and just wondering why I was just doing all this work and giving out ideas and not landing jobs with it. So his record company emailed me like three or four times before I responded. The record company called me and they said, you know, we've been emailing you, why haven't we heard, heard anything back? Are you not interested? And I just went and said, I need to, let me meet this artist one-on-one. -on -one. Like, I just want to make sure there's a true connection because everybody that I had worked with before was a friend or just someone I knew and we had like mutual respect so I wanted to, if I was going to go big time I had to meet with somebody face to face and they had to feel comfortable so I met Gerard Way for coffee and he was like I love everything you, you've been doing and he started naming videos and he was like you know how can I get something like that made for me I don't know, I just kind of quizzed him, like, okay, what do you like about it? Okay, you like that I use a TV camera. Do you like the lighting? Do you like it when I go trippy? Do you know what a video synthesizer is? And I was like really kind of just quizzing him to make sure like, are you like for real into me or do you want me? Am I gonna be a tool of the record industry? And yeah, and he was like, no, like said yes to this. I had showed him some Fairlight stuff, like, hey, if I did a video for you and it like tripped out like this, would you be into it? And he said yes. And so I got like, the this was the first video I had that had a legit budget, like a $35,000 budget, which meant that I could really pull off an idea. I could pull all of my knowledge into something so I could build a set. I could do really cool lighting. I could put my camera on a crane. I could, sh I could record it on, <laughs> on beta tape. And so that was like really a positive experience for me because I made this very 
mainstream music video. But I was using things that were absolutely not mainstream because this is like everyone else is shooting at that time on like red cameras and Alexas and he just kind of let me do my thing. And then from that, I kind of found out that his fan base were teenagers. Like we're talking like 15 and under kind of young teenagers that are just discovering things. And so all these teenagers kind of found out what video art was. And they kind of started to like email me and like ask me questions. And like I did a few interviews with teenagers for their high school project. You know, like I'm ready. Our, pro our project is to interview you know, somebody we admire and what they do. So I felt like it was just a really positive experience because it like, I had a breakthrough where I had enough budget to do something and I had an artist that trusted me. And that turned me on to like a really, um, a, a really interesting age group. And then I knew I could, it just kind of gave me confidence that I could really continue. Thank you.